Okay, um, I think uh, everything is set up now. Um, the contents should be on. It's already on YouTube. I'm live streaming, but um, so I believe we can start. Um, any question before we continue? Um, no, 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 Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Sir, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Okay, so... um. Uh, like I mentioned earlier today, we'll just try and focus on um, mobile app and backend. But before we do anything mobile app, let us um, look at backend, right? Um, now, remember, remember for those of you in mobile app, if you go to our YouTube channel, you're going to see quite a lot of videos. Can you okay let me share my screen so that you can see what i'm referring to okay now so if you go to our youtube channel we're going to um please can you guys mute yourselves please okay so uh, can you see this uh, page Yes, sir. All right. So, um, th this one that is currently live now is what um this current class. And so, if you come here, um, for those of you mobile app, you're going to see, um, some interesting videos, right? So there's local storage on Android, local storage on Android, right? Uh, making API requests from Android, making API requests from Android. All of these are various, like part one, part two, part three, and all of that. Okay. So uh, screen navigation, we did this at CUN, right? Okay, so this is part of the skill up class. So if you watch these videos, you're going to uh, find uh, some very informative things there. So you should go ahead. I, I, I will not repeat anything that we already have on the channel. I will not repeat it uh, in class. So it's good that we already have these things. And uh, your exam that you'll be writing tomorrow, I'll be uh, taking some questions from these videos. Okay, so if you're an Android person, the good thing is uh, we've had, we have a lot of videos online that you can watch and uh, take notes. And so you have a lot of time between now and tomorrow, 4 p.m. to prepare adequately with these videos. Okay, um, so before uh, that, and that is why we we'll focus a little on back end today. Because mobile app, we have a lot of videos that you can look at here and make sense of what we have been doing. Okay. And um, so, but today, let's just focus on uh, back end and see how far we can uh, push the back end class. Right. Okay. So, um, remember that we said that when you're building, right, whenever you're building, I just want to do some kind of foundational cleanup uh, before we continue whenever we are building stuff for the web there are languages that are suitable for use okay we said that uh, java was one of them right and if you're building with java we also mentioned that there are integrated development environments that are popular so if you're looking at my system here you're going to see i have about uh, three IDEs and 
one code editor uh, staring at you so like this this one where my mouse pointer is now is android studio this this one is intellij this is netbeans and this is what we've been using in class and so we will continue i'm not seeing the pointer you are still seeing the youtube channel is something wrong sir a call came in i don't know why someone will be calling me at this time <clears throat> Okay, so um, I believe you can see NetBeans now. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, this is a very new installation. In fact, I, the first project here, the first one I created with this NetBeans installation was done today. Okay, so it's quite a very new one. So if you're having a fresh installation as well, uh you you are not missing out on anything everything we are going to do today would be i'll assume that we are starting on a clean slate but i'll be faster uh, based on the fact that we have done some things in the past right i will not be slow to cover those parts that we've already learned i'll i'll kind of uh, skim through them but um the thing is since the video is will be there on youtube whatever you don't get eh, so you take time later you can ask questions but uh, for you for the concept to really sink in you can go back and uh, kind of uh, rewatch them to make sense of what we are doing okay <clears throat> right so um i would like to start by creating a new project okay i'll start by creating a new project and i'll do that see remember that what we did in our last class was to uh, do um we built a simple front end, right, that can interact with the back end. Okay. So, so or IJ, can you remind me what we did in our last back end class? In the last class, just like you were saying, we built a front end to interact with the back end. Then we stopped that where we added a back end server. And you said in our next class, you teach us about the request object and the response object and how to manipulate. The front end and back end com and communication and the get and post method all right all right all right okay so did i mention that uh with java that there are two technologies you can make use of uh which yes is, okay the api and the servlet okay so what was i teaching you with that day was it the servlet or the api the servlet okay so let's finish up that servlet uh, discussion and then uh, we'll look at the api We'll try and do that today for android for those in android you need to pay attention to this class because if you're going to go back to watch the video right the mobile app people if you're going to go back and watch the videos we have on the channel you need to also understand what we discussed here so pay attention very well so that you can get it so we are going to they discuss these two technologies we'll discuss the servlets we'll discuss the api right so try and look at these two very important concepts and then we'll wrap it up but we'll be as fast as we can uh, because i have a lot of other things to uh, attend to right so um we already we're already familiar with this process in creating new projects so i'll call this um revision front end or let me just call it revision i'm calling the web project revision and uh, so say next then this is where remember we said we talked about having web servers without the web server uh, your system cannot serve or respond to web requests so what makes your system have the capacity to respond to web requests or requests from browsers and what gives your system the capacity to respond to those requests is that you have a web server Right, and we mentioned various kinds of web servers. And for uh, uh, Java, the web servers that are popular, the most popular one is Tomcat. We have Glassfish, we have Pyra, we have JBoss, we have many of them, right? But for our class, we are focusing on 
glass fish server today we'll be making use of a uh, glass fish server okay so um once you've done that you can click on finish so clicking on finish uh, what that does for you click on finish what that does for you is that let me let me quit this whatsapp so that it doesn't distract me Okay. <clears throat> now, now that we have our revision project already up and running, we're going to try and put a very simple front end together, right? So remember that um, the essence of this class wasn't to teach you front end, but we said we are going to try and do something, a little thing. Uh, but the little thing we are doing essentially is to, you know, uh, show you how you can put some things together but this should serve as a a good introduction to uh, your fonts and then if you want to learn more you can go on youtube search for videos that will do justice to that right but generally um, what i advise people who are doing backend um, is that if you know you're going to be working on a web project that will require you to interact with front end or that you are expected to have a front end uh, alongside the project you're working like you're expected to build a full uh, web application then my recommendation is usually to get a template buy a template online okay so if you're open to uh, that so far some of my students are putting money together to uh, buy a template so if you're open to that idea you can let me know i can loop you into what they are doing because some of these templates are very expensive thousands and thousands of naira. okay so that uh, what, what that does for you is that you have very beautifully designed uh, front end pages so that you can depending if you want to work on a school project a, a medical project a church project you already have templates that uh, kind of reflects the the designs you you may want to use for this thing so you just copy and paste edit this thing so that they can interact with your backend that way you can have a full-fledged uh, web application up and running and the only thing you essentially did was to edit the front end to your test and then focus on building the backend right um so it's also good you understand how the front end works okay so that you know what you're editing right and so but what we are doing here should at least give you the right motivation to know what to do okay so uh, our title will change it just to reflect what we are doing here we'll change it to revision okay and then our content we want to put up a very simple form that will interact with okay let's let's have um, a welcome message Anyway, my spelling of welcome is very beautiful. Okay. Welcome to revision. Then we just have a very simple, very simple form. So now remember that this form for, for it to become useful they, they have you need to specify at least two attributes the first attribute being uh, your action your action is the address of where the the, the url to the back end the way the logic is the logic that will help process this form okay and then the method so having these two things the method that is where you put whether it's post or get you want to use okay we talked about post and get in our last class so our uh, action since we have not created a servlet yet so we don't have anything to specify for action in the meantime so let's go ahead and put up the other things so we'll have an input 
so the first thing we want to do here is something like a sign up form okay this sign up form will help us create users so we want to bring up some things that will help us uh, do essential things so we already have we are okay so let's do uh, maybe username and password it's just a very simple sign up form that to uh, ask the user for username and password okay so type here is text and then um we'll have a um, placeholder and uh, the placeholder is just like hint to hint the user what you're expecting here okay so we'll call this okay let's say phone number instead okay let's say phone number instead instead of username right so name the reason we are naming this control here is because if it doesn't have a name you cannot interact with it from the back end okay so the name is an essential attribute if you are going to do any sort of backend interaction so this would be um password then the name password okay um okay so we have this uh oh we cannot we we have to add the button so that this can become functional for us so i'll call this sign up Okay, so we have a very clean page up and running so but for us to specify action and let's test this let's not go too far before we test let's test it so that if we've made any errors so far we can quickly correct before we move on okay so i've changed the browser i want to use to chrome and i'll click on run Okay, so if you're looking at my Chrome browser here, you would notice that the form is up, right? But notice that the moment I click on sign up, nothing happens. The reason nothing is happening is because we have not specified an action that will be taken if the form when this form is submitted. Okay, so we need to um, specify the action. But before you do that, you have to create a backend logic, right? And so remember that we said whenever you're building a web application and you're making use of um, your ID, you see very uh, this folder structure, this or a similar folder structure, right? So your web is where you put everything that will appear on the front, and just like we have this index of HTML that we've been editing, so on the source packages, that is where you're going to put everything that will run on your backend so but the first thing you must do is to create a package that will hold all of these things and so i'll call this the core so uh call and i'll finish uh, then this time around say new servlet so i'm creating a new servlet in my package so on this servlet you can call it anything you want to call it so i usually i prefer uh naming my servlet or my API um, giving it a name that reflects what it does okay so I can call my uh, servlet a reviser reviser in the sense that we're working on a revision project so that um, that way okay it it will reflect what we are doing so I've created a reviser and now you see that NetBeans being very generous would go ahead and generate uh, some code for us now, but if you're using a recent NetBeans, what is happening now would definitely happen on your screen. And so we said that the way out is to replace this Javax with Jakarta because there has been a migration of uh, this um, of essential Java API from Javax to Jakarta, right? Okay, so just replace anything Javax here with Jakarta. So you just do 
if your net binge order control h right uh, then where it says find what you type javax where it says replace with you type jakarta just as you're seeing on my screen so once you click on replace all all of those things will be replaced and you notice that the errors are gone okay so now um there are there are quite a lot of ways your servlet can help you if you look at uh, this fact before i talk about it now look under url patterns you're going to see that this is revisor right this revisor is what you can now put in your action attributes right we'll type revisor there type revisor and then whenever someone clicks on the submit button it will bring that uh, form to this page to this revisor and what does revisor what's the revisor trying to do if you remember your java very well you understand that out.println what it essentially does is to print a line to the output now but the reason you're not seeing system here is because the output is not to your own system output so the output is based on whatever output the this the source of the request is where the output here reflects the source of the request so if the source of the request is a web page uh, on someone's computer in london right that the output would be that person's system right the person's browser okay so that's what this output here is uh, representing and so we are saying on that output print the first line doc type so you see that what we did here is that this servlet is essentially recreating a page because if you look at all of these things that is printing is essentially the things you need for a web page okay it's printing the html tag here the head tag here the body tag and all of that okay so let's see what this will give us if we run this now if we run this now let's just refresh this Okay, so now that I've refreshed this, you notice that if we click on this sign up button now, okay, it brings us to the revisor. If you look at the URL here, you're going to notice the revisor. Okay, so this revisor is the, the revisor you're seeing at the URL is telling us that the the software or the file responsible for what you're seeing in your browser now is revisor, this the revisor logic right so that's what what is responsible for what you're seeing now and so if you look here carefully you're going to notice that what we are having on that page is this h1 tag the h1 tag that is saying servlet revisor at request dot get context path okay and that is exactly what we have here servlet revisor at this revision here is the context part of the project context part of the project and so what essentially happened is that java went and retrieved the context part of the project and added it if you remember a string concatenation in java right just retrieve the context part and added it and made it a part of this h1 right but what i have to tell you now is if you use this if you use this uh, netbeans templates right you're failing one fundamental principle of separation of concerns a very important principle of separation of concerns which says that you should keep everything front end at the front end keep everything back end at the back end it doesn't look nice to have your uh, back end code uh, it doesn't look nice to have your front end code you will be seeing html tag uh, h1 tag paragraph tag inside the java code it doesn't make sense right so that is why i had to delete that part so i'll show you a better way of doing that uh, don't think that because netbeans generated the code it means that what they did is the best so that's not the best hmm? okay so uh, let me show you a better approach okay 
Are you guys following me up to this point? Yes, sir. Okay, so did we get this far in our last class? Um, we stopped at um, putting the the context part. Okay. Like that server at um, something, something. Okay, That's okay. okay, okay. So now, what I essentially want to do now, I have revealed two important methods to you here. The do get method and the do post method, right? Now, uh, the do get method responds to every request that has get as its method. If you see this method here, if you use get, then this is the method that will respond to your request. If you use post, just like we did, this is the method that will respond to your request. But the idea here is not for us to have different logic for get, different logic for post. So what essentially I will do is any request that comes into the get, I will redirect it to the post. So by saying do post, pass it the request and the response object. Right, so with, when I, the moment I do this, it means that whoever calls do get and sends in a request and a response, eh, eh, my code here will now forward it to this do post. So what I'll focus now to do is to implement all my logic, all my backend logic inside my do post method. That way, I wouldn't have to be repeating code all the time. That way, I wouldn't have to be repeating code, right? So um, the first thing you essentially need to do right is to collect uh, the parameters that are coming in from the front end and there are just two parameters here right which is your phone and password these are just the two things that are coming in okay and so i'll do that let me say string phone equals to request which is the request object. Remember that everything that is coming in from your front end is bundled inside this request object. So I'll say request object gets me a parameter that you're carrying that is called phone. I'll repeat the same thing for in order to extract my password. So I'll say request, request object so get me the parameter inside you that is called password. So, and those are the only two parameters that were sent. Okay. Those are the only two parameters that were sent. If you look here, we have only two of them. That's phone and password. So the moment you click on sign up, it will carry these things, bundle them inside the request object. And forward it to reviser. So the duty of reviser is to take the request object, look at the parameters inside, unbundle it, put one inside phone, put the other one inside password for me. So it's left for me to make use of this phone and password. So for now, what I want to do is to print uh, the phone and password. So I'll say string, no, I'll say system dot out dot print line then for password okay so now what we are going to do is that when we submit this thing to reviser, we want to see whether it will print it will print anything in this output for us. This is where we are going to be expecting uh, any kind of uh, interaction, like anything from our file. So let's uh, go ahead and test it out. So I'll click on sign up and I'll see what will happen. Okay, so you see what is happening here. It has taken us to revise her, but nothing is showing on the page. The reason nothing is showing on the page is because we did not ask it to do anything on the page. So, and if you look here, you're going to notice that I printed empty space 
uh, three uh, iPhones, three dashes, and then another empty space, another empty string. And why? Because that is what we essentially asked it to do. We say print phone, but because we did not supply any phone, it just printed empty string, the three ashes plus empty password. So well, let's go back and submit uh, something there and see whether it will print it for us. So let's say yes.